Hey guys, what's up? It's Yobi Ranger here and welcome back to another episode of a Total War 3 Kingdoms 1v1 unit comparison series videos and today we have Saber Militia led by A Sentinel versus Saber Militia led by A Champion. The stats for the two units will be popping up on screen anytime now so you can pause and take a look and see how the two units size up against each other. We are playing this on romance mode and in romance mode all the characters in the game are represented as larger than their heroes as depicted in the novel The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. We are also playing this on extreme unit scale setting and in extreme unit scale setting all infantry units with the exception of a few units have 240 men per unit. Okay, one second. We... Okay. Okay, now um, before we start, first of all, I would like to sincerely apologize um, because lately with the Pearl Dragon videos, you have heard me rant and swear and curse a lot. Especially regarding the appearance of the pearl dragons. Okay, I've been rambling way too much. And uh, the reason is I get really triggered whenever I see those pearl dragons. Okay. See, the concept of the pearl dragons is that <coughs> it's a very nice concept. Melee unit, an elite unit which relies solely on the skill of its uh, skill and proficiency of the weapon it uses to block incoming attacks and incoming projectiles is always a good idea okay it is uh, found wide acceptance all across the sport war game okay one very good example would be the sword masters of Hoyt in total war warhammer 2 for the high elves okay but what pissed me off the most was the design of the unit like you have such a good con concept in your head and when you go and create the unit, whatever, whatever, um, 3D model entity, what, whatever you call it, the technical words for it, you just ended up making them as purple pajama boys, just like the Eastern Infantry pink pajama boys in Rome Total War. <laughs> we have our purple slash pearl pajama boys here in Total War Three Kingdoms, and that really pissed me off. Okay. What's even more triggering is those pearl dragons have an ornate weapon. Their weapons have a nice decorated counter weight at the lower end of their uh, glaive shaft. Okay, white cord wrapping on the handle and another tassel of white horse hair. Okay, all the decoration for that weapon. And these guys are wearing commoners robes, like literally commoners robes. That really, really got me pissed off, okay? And the robes also are not, like, it's not some sort of uniform kind of thing. If it had been a kind of uniform where they had some sort of, I don't know, band, or like, sashes or bandanas or whatever. Uh, I mean, their unit card is looking better than the way they look, okay? Uh, it was terrible, like, very bad. The only thing common in all, between all of them is they all have man buns, that's it. Apart from that, nothing else. They just look like common peasants with a glaive, with an ornate glaive. Okay. So my question was, if the unit is supposed to rely on the skill of using its weapon, its weapon proficiency skill, why the hell do they have full sleeves? First of all, full loose sleeves, isn't that supposed to hinder the unit's movement? Okay, fine. Even if they have the full length sleeves, shabby, floppy, sloppy, flabby sleeves, at least they could have indicate like they could have shown them with their sleeves tucked up to enable them to freely swing their uh, weapons around, right? And some sort of what, as usual, like bandana or some sort of color scheme to show that they are pearl dragons, like some sort of what special footwear or uh, I don't know, uh, some kind of putties to tie uh, I, uh, or some kind of belt or just a waist sash some sort of demarcation to show that it's an elite unit but no the only thing you get to know is you see them with an ornate weapon they look like bloody peasants they look like bloody ass commoners that really really triggered me and when, whenever I saw them my, my blood would boil like literally like felt, felt like reaching to the screen and grabbing the person who's designed and bang him on his head it was really bad that's why I would always get pissed off. Okay, so sincere apologies for that. Okay, now let's get down, get back to the video. Okay, so um, first things first, as usual, we'll put our primary general on um, reject the ruling. We'll keep him far away from the fight. 
Our secondary general will lure the enemy general into a fight. Now, if you are wondering why even this champion class has access to sword, sword militia, it's not saber militia. Again, second, uh, second red flag. I don't know which idiot named this unit as saber militia. They are not using a saber. There is a difference between the saber and the weapon they are using. The weapon they are using is a dao. Okay. Of course, both saber and dao are single edge slashing swords, but this is an old weapon, and a saber is something like what? 16th century AD or 17th, 17th, 18th century AD onwards. And why will you give sabers to infantry? First of all, saber is a horseback, is, is meant for mounted troops, right? Light cavalry, right? I don't know which idiot name them, I don't know. Do your research as bro properly. You uh, doing some dumbass research and being so lazy to name, you know, sword militia would have been much better. I would have been okay with it. Bloody saber militia, what they're carrying, what 18th century blades is it? Ah, whatever. Okay, so all classes of uh, characters in the game um, can recruit all five cl all types of militia. So the types of militia are sword militia, G militia. Bow Archer Militia, uh, Mounted Lancer Militia and Mounted Sword Militia. They are called Mounted Saber Militia but I please call them as Mounted Sword Militia, please. Okay, it's, it's utter blasphemy. The name is utter blasphemy. Okay, and this is why I get people get pissed off for this reason. When you can't do your basic ass research. Okay, <clears throat> but each character will give their own buffs or bonuses to the respective Militia units. Okay, so Sentinel will give different set of bonuses to Saber Militia, sorry, Saber, Sword Militia and Champion will give a different set of bonuses to the Sword Militia under the Champion, okay. Now, both units have this Caltrops ability and this they just throw these uh, Caltrops on the ground, okay. And if you step on that, you're going to take damage, your men will die. Some of your troops, will, our troops will die due to the damage sustained. So, the A is finicky and it is going to make use of this. Next thing, we are not going to charge into them, okay? I know this will be like very controversial, people will scream bloody murder and say no, this is not a fair one, but hear me out. See, the thing is, finicky as AI will not charge into us, very finicky. I don't, cannot predict when they will charge into us or they just walk into us. Last thing I want is my unit to charge headlong into them and they just take everything in a charge to their face and then it affects the battle performance. It may put it in our favor and then my whole test result gets skewed, performance also gets skewed. So it's okay, it's going to pain, our eyes, our eyes are going to bleed but it's okay, let's, let's just let them walk into each other and kill each other on even footing, okay? Alright, let's start. First thing first, let's lure the enemy general away, okay, he's racing towards us, okay, we'll just, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there we go. So he is going to initiate the duel with us and we will uh, accept it but we will move far away so that there are no extra morale penalties when he is killed. Okay, he is going to be killed, that is for sure. Okay. He jumps. I mean, we will accept it at 3 or 2. Accept. Thank you. Get lost. Okay. These idiots. Ah, there we go. They are throwing those stupid caltrops. And uh, you see them fight. Again, they broke formation. The boss.
Oh, the build is still going on. Okay. Okay, great. Now you just run away. Okay. Then uh okay. For interest in time we'll speed this up, but again, see they got a morale pack. Morale, morale penalty because their general died. Okay, it is minus 13 now, but it will reduce to minus 6. It will drop by half. Okay. Let me, uh, in the interest of time, speed it up now. Okay, fast forward. Okay, both units have just lost one third of their hair strength. See, this is triple spear, and even then they're they're just hacking at each other. Oh, oh we're wavering. Okay, both units are wavering. I don't know who is gonna run away first. We okay. Uh man, this is a very close fight. God, it is so close. Oh, we lost. Damn. Okay, that was a sub. Oh my god. Will you just look at that? I mean, they just got two more kills compared to us, and they we are already breaking. That was close, man. It was really nerve breaking, like really nerve wracking. Wow. That was a very close fight. So, two kill difference and we ran away. Insane, insane, amazing. So, cost wise, both units cost the same in custom battle. 450, okay? Uh, their score cost the same. But the respective units get different bonuses because, again, the class of characters are different, right? So, for that reason. But this is a very close fight and both sides fought pretty long and pretty hard. You see, all around both men from both sides are dead both sides have taken casualties okay but they just eked it out just a little bit okay now we'll we will not route we'll return uh but again no it won't be fair because they chase us down they inflict casualties and all that uh yeah so they have killed and again uh, that morale penalty is there so now if you're wondering why i always insist that our general wins the duel is see the problem is it's the AI. So if I lose the duel, if my general loses the duel, so the enemy general is going to come in and interfere. Whereas if I am the person who's winning the duel, I won't interfere. I see you just saw, I just ran my general away from the fight. I just let the two units fight it out so that nobody would meddle. If it's the enemy general, he's going to win. Okay. He's going to come. He's going to interfere. He's going to come in from behind, give morale shocks, all sorts of penalties and he'll make our unit run away. So instead of that, uh, I am opted for this. Okay. Alright guys. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, then leave a like. If you did not like the video, then leave a dislike. Share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos when they are released. Until the next video, this is Shinobi Ranger signing out. Bye!